So we just had a great finish at Darlington Raceway for the Goodyear 400, finishing off with Brad Keselowski ending that long winless streak. Let's talk about it on this week's edition of Car on the Hauler. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. What did you think of the Goodyear 400 at Darlington Raceway? Plus, give me any improvements I can make on the channel. So it was throwback weekend at Darlington Raceway. A lot of good paint schemes out there. We had some pretty decent racing. I wouldn't say it was a great race. With these cars, clean air is a big deal. And dirty air is always going to mess with your car. It's all about track position. And I didn't expect it to play as big of a factor as it did today at Darlington. But it definitely did. Track position was huge. And a driver that had track position pretty much all day and looked really fast was Tyler Reddick. Seems like every time we come here now, Reddick leads a bunch of laps and is not able to finish the job. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Like I mentioned, track position was a huge thing. And there was just a couple of drivers... Who I felt like were contending for the win or contending for a great finish throughout most of the race. I already mentioned Tyler Reddick. Of course, you had Kyle Larson. Larson had a really good car, but got up into the wall and seemed like he might have bent his toe link. And then a few laps later, ended up just finishing his day, spinning out and crashing into the wall. Very unfortunate. Probably had one of the best looking paint schemes out there with the Terry Labonte throwback. Also had a really fast car, but finished behind the wall. I said it in my preview video, I hope that I eat my words when it comes to Ford, and Ford looked great today. I think they had five Fords finish in the top ten, one of those being Justin Haley. Justin Haley had an amazing day for Ford. Ford overall just looked really strong throughout the day, especially Brad Keselowski, who ended up with the win at the end of the day. One driver I expected to play a bigger factor into today was definitely Danny Hamlin. Danny Hamlin had a Good race, I'd say, who had a top 10 car throughout most of the day, but I expect him to compete for the win. This is one of his best tracks, and he's also been pretty hot lately. I think he ended up getting sixth in the number 11. Wasn't a huge factor. Same thing with William Byron. I expected Byron to be more of a factor. He didn't really factor into the win at all as well. And then a really tough day overall for both Kyle Busch and Christopher Bell. Neither of them looked like they had speed whatsoever throughout the day. They were just really struggling with their race cars and they just did not seem very competitive unfortunately and then track house track house did not look good either chastain was running anywhere between 15th and 20th most of the race suarez other than Derek kraus was the slowest guy most of the day he did not look good at all in that quaker state number 99 now that we've gone through some of the players that we had and some of the huge non-players some of the surprises for the day let's get to the end of this race We're waiting. A couple of cautions at the finish set up a good run to the end. And it looked like here for a little bit that Chris Buescher was going to potentially run away with the victory. Chris Buescher was quiet most of the race. And then because of strategy late and some well-timed caution flags, ended up finding himself up in the front. He had a top 10 car most of the race. Was not quite as quick as his teammate Brad Keselowski. But here late, it seemed like he had a great shot at the win yeah chris busher ended up taking the lead late when there was contact between tyler reddick and brad keselowski brad keselowski trying to get past reddick to take the lead and they ended up getting together and busher passed them both on the inside and began to drive away and look like he was possibly going to make up for that close loss he had last week at kansas speedway but as the run went further along Busher began to slow down and Reddick and Keselowski were beginning to catch up to the number 17 with only a couple of laps remaining. With only a few laps left in the race, Tyler Reddick had gotten to the bumper of Chris Busher. He sent it to the inside. It looked like he tried to pull a slide job on Chris Busher and he even said it in his post-race interview. He tried to slow down and just it was too late. 
got up into Busher. They made heavy contact with the wall, and they both lost tires, had to come down pit lane, which it opened up the door for Brad Keselowski to take the race lead. At this point, the only thing Brad Keselowski wasn't hoping for was a caution flag. He was pretty far ahead of Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs was cutting into that gap. If he had a few more laps, Gibbs might have had a chance of getting there. But he ran out of time as Brad Keselowski ends that 110 race winless streak. 110 races since Brad Keselowski won in the Cup Series. And Ford has yet to win a race all of 2024 in the Cup Series. Xfinity Series and Truck Series, and they were able to get the win today with Brad Keselowski. This is also Brad Keselowski's first win as a team owner, as an owner-driver. It's been a while since we've seen an owner-driver go to victory lane, the last one being Tony Stewart. While Brad Keselowski was doing donuts on the front straightaway with his American flag, there was some fireworks going on on pit lane. Chris Buescher I would consider to be one of the more calm, laid-back drivers in the Cup Series. If he gets mad, you have to do a lot to get him mad. And he ran up on Tyler Reddick, grabbed him for a moment, was yelling at him. He was upset and distraught, and I do not blame him. You are disgusting. I'm going to kill you. Give me $200. Yeah. He almost had the win last week at Kansas. Possibly could have had it if there wasn't contact on the front straightaway with Kyle Larson. And then this week had a great opportunity at Darlington just to have Reddick send it in there and really wreck them both and take them both out of not just a win, but a good finish. They both ended up finishing outside the top 30 after this incident they had. I do respect what Tyler Reddick said. Tyler Reddick completely owned up on the incident. He owned up on his part of this incident because he just got too ahead of himself. He just drove it way too hard into the corner, tried to pull a great move by slide jobbing him in three and four, and just he wasn't clear. And by the time he realized he wasn't going to be clear, it was too late for him to slow down enough. But Brad Keselowski gave a great interview on the front straightaway as well. It was just a great moment to see Brad K back in victory lane here today. Great moment for Brad, great moment for RFK and for Ford Racing. But what did you think of the race? Let me know down in the comments. What did you think of the Goodyear 400 at Darlington Raceway? Do you think this performance means that Ford is back and they're going to be competing once again very heavy week in and week out with Chevy and Toyota? What do you think this means for the future of RFK Racing? Also, do you see some potential payback in the future from Chris Buescher on Tyler Reddick? Let me know. But that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace.